Welcome to a session on the play, A Streetcar Named Desire by Tennessee Williams. It's quite an important play, uh, which talks about, you know, the plays itself. So usually when we read certain plays, we always think it will be about the characters, it will be about the story. But you should know that Streetcar Named Desire is one such play that talks about the country itself. And that is the geographical location of the country itself is emulated through the characters. And it is quite interesting to see that. So this particular uh, play. It is by Tennessee Williams, who was born in Columbus, Mississippi, in the year 1911. He was a, he was raised by a very complex in a very complex family situation, uh, alienated from his abusive father. So you can see all the aspects, you know, uh, um, through the characters in the play itself. So and he was coddled by his overly protective mother. He was closely attached to his older sister who was mentally ill and later institutionalized and lobotomized. So again, that can be seen in the character. So the abusive father is something that you can see in Stanley, while you know the sister's character is something that you can see in Blanche. So he dropped out of college and worked in a warehouse before finishing school at age 27, before moving to New Orleans and reinventing himself. And um, so with Streetcar Named Desire, he became, a, he had a very successful career and he had a very stable relationship uh, until the death of his partner and his own later succumbing to substance abuse in 1970. So it was not a very you know, happy history that we have of Tennessee Williams. Now, um, this particular play, it can be, uh, you know, uh, uh, marked within the genres of Southern Gothic and melodrama. Southern Gothic, because it is a, you know, kind of a genre that talks about fiction or drama set in American South, emphasizing the region's haunted history. Haunted history here doesn't mean anything ghostly, but related to slavery, civil war, poverty, etc. Then the grotesque horror and alienation of its inhabitants' lives exemplified in the works of uh, William Faulkner, Tennessee Williams, Eudora Welty, and Flannery O'Connor. Okay, so it, it can be termed as a Southern Gothic work, while at the same time it is also a melodrama because there are these exaggerated characters, their behavior, the events which are intended, obviously intended to appeal the emotions of the, of the people who are watching the play. And sometimes it is also considered as a subcultural queer style in early to mid 20th century, where it signaled a gender bending rebuke to the sobriety of straight male identified high culture. Also, the most important classification that you can give for a uh, streetcar named Desire is to place it within the genre of tragedy, modern tragedy, not the tragedies that we've read about Shakespeare or other writers, but a modern tragedy. Now, a genre of uh, drama derived from ancient Greek religious ritual, but surviving into the modern era. What are the elements of tragedy? There will be a noble hero where the noble in social status or character brought low either through death or defeat by a flaw. There would be a flaw in these characters and, uh, you know, who's otherwise an admirable character. And this flaw and the fall followed by the flaw, the, the displayed flaw will exemplify the fate or a larger community or collective. Okay. And in Greek and Shakespearean tragedy, the tragic hero is usually a royal figure, um, or other social elite, but a modern tragedy may be a middle or working class person. So coming to the modern tragedy, the person would be belonging to a middle or working class. And in the mid 20th century, there was a critical debate about whether or not tragedy was still possible in the godless disenchanted era. So the play was published in the year 1947 after the World War II. And the play shows the decline of the old South and the rise of the new South. What was the new South becoming? Okay. And there was a struggle between the old South, old Southern ideals and new Southern ideals, which is exemplified through the characters of Stanley and Blanche, and also the African-American people, the immigrants. There are many different characters talked about, so that and the role of women were also changing. So coming to the themes in the play, The Streetcar Named Desire, 
the major, these are the few major themes. You have the new South versus the old South, the thing that we just mentioned. Then there is the concept of illusion versus reality. Again, which is, uh, you know, which is a result of the ideals, change of ideals between the old South and new South. Then you have desire, the social class, the gender roles and madness. Okay, coming to the first theme of the play, old South versus new South. So there is a metaphorical description or representation of the transition between the two eras in Southern history. And what is a metaphorical representation? It's the characters, Stanley and Blanche. So through the characters in the novel, we get to see Old South and New South in America. So how is Old South and New South different? Old South had the concepts of slavery quite, uh, you know, importantly, and uh, they had... Uh, the uh, the class system and all these things were quite strong but coming to the new south it was different it was uh, you know a mixture of people so the old south refers to the traditional conservative and aristocratic southern culture while the new south it refers to the modern industrialized and progressive culture that emerged in the aftermath of war okay that is what is shown in the new south industrialized progressive money-minded and all that and Blanche embodies the values of this culture, of the Old South, including the refinement, the charm, the gentility, uh, the pride of her family's aristocratic heritage and sense of superiority. It brings her increasingly at odds with the changes occurring in the world around her. So throughout the play, you can see how Blanche is finding it very difficult to accept certain things that she witnesses in the New South. Now coming to Stanley Kowalski, he is a very rough character, he is aggressive, he is unrefined, he is very raw and, you know, just like uh, industry you see in a factory, very raw. Uh, but he is also practical, down to earth and focused on the present, determined to expose Blanche's hypocrisy and destroy her illusion of superiority. So the same, you know, um, that animosity that existed between uh, Stanley and Blanche is something that you can find in the from the people of Old South and New South as well. So the play suggests that the South is undergoing a painful and violent transformation and that the clash between the old and the new is uh, irreconcilable. Coming to the next theme, illusion versus reality. Okay, so uh, Blanche's illusion of herself refined and genteel southern belle, in reality a deeply troubled woman who is struggling with alcoholism, guilt and loss of her family's estate, unable to accept the harsh realities of her life and instead retreats into a world of fantasy and illusion shattered when confronted by the truth about her past, including her affair with the student, suicide of her husband, and she is not able to accept that reality, which leads to the mental breakdown towards the end of the play. So Blanche is a character, you know, just like the old South, old conservative ideals or conventional ideals, Blanche is trying to live in a certain world of illusion, of idealism. Uh, so again, you can see the aspect of, so she, she thinks of certain things, she, she thinks of certain things, and that's all illusion. Coming to Stella's illusion, she thinks that she is in a happy marriage, she is very happy in her married life, while it is actually abusive and destructive relationship. So Blanche's illusion of Old South and Stanley's reality of New South is a clash that you see. So uh, the, the, the theme of illusion versus reality, again, it is emulated through the characters Blanche and Stanley. Stanley represents the reality of the New South. Coming to the next theme, social class, it is quite evidently talked about. Blanche is someone who talks about her elite class uh, quite for many scenes and has a strong sense of pride and superiority due to her family's heritage. And there are scenes where you see she actually looking down upon Stanley Kowalski uh, talking about his, uh, you know, uh, his uh, way of behavior, his lack of money, the house that he lives. So she is actually looking down. She's actually looking at Stanley as an inferior member of social uh, society or society itself. So 
that difference between the class, the high class and the low class is also shown in the play. And Stanley resents Blanche's snobbishness and sees her as a threat to his marriage and way of life. So there is, there is this animosity or, you know, looking down of uh, uh, Blanche upon Stanley while at the same time you see a certain, certain kind of hatred that Stanley has towards this high class Blanche. So it is very evident through their interactions. Coming to the next theme, which is desire. So uh, desire, as the name suggests, it's uh, Blanche's desire for love and companionship. And you see Stanley's desire for power and his aggressive dominant nature towards Blanche. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's also sometimes you see uh, Stanley being uh, jealous of Blanche's influence over his wife, Stella, which obviously leads to the conflicts. And Stella, she uh, has a desire for stability and desire. While it is not actually there, still she desires for it. Okay, she wants a peaceful life. She wants a happy married life. Even if she's not in it, she believes it is like that. And she also explodes the play also explores the theme of sexual desire. Blanche is depicted as a sexually liberated woman. You see that aspect of sexual desire shown by Blanche and you know most of the characters, Blanche, Stella and um, you know, Stanley at times. The next prominent theme is the gender uh, role. Uh, the male character is shown as very dominant and aggressive, while the female characters are depicted as submissive and vulnerable. So uh, Stanley Kowalski is actually, you know, uh, a picture of uh, the, the conventional masculinity that you see, the strong, the aggressive, the dominant, while you see Stella being portrayed as a submissive dependent woman who is always dependent on his, uh, on her husband. And um, uh, Blanche, she challenges uh, the main traditional gender role set, the traditional femininity. She is independent, assertive, sexually liberated. So there is, again, this, you know, uh, 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 a conflict between the ideal masculinity, I mean, conventional masculinity and ideal femininity. Then you have madness. Towards the end, you see how Blanche succumbs to madness and she was finally taken to a prison, I mean, a mental asylum. And it becomes clear that Stanley himself has a violent and aggressive nature that is also quite evident. Uh, you know, his violent nature also shows madness. So these are the few important uh, themes uh, of the play, The Streetcar Named Desire. Thank you.